1994 Camaro represents the fourth generation of pony car from the GM Giant Chevrolet. The fourth generation was introduced in January of 1993 for the 1993 model year, with initial design running until 1997, with the mid-cycle refresh happening in 1998. The refresh would be known ultimately as the Catfish due to the odd front-end styling. The end of the road for the Camaro would come in 2002 and remain out of production until the car was reintroduced as a retro-inspired design in 2010. Several changes were made for the 1994 model year. The mechanically controlled and operated 4L60 automatic transmission was replaced with the electronically operated and controlled 4L60E, which was shared with other GM vehicles with the V8 engines. Dashboard gauges and graphics were changed from yellow to white, and there was also a spot in the gauge cluster reading ASR off. Although GM had intended to install ASR or acceleration slip regulation, called TCS by Pontiac, in the 1994 F-bodies, it did not make it into production until the following model year. Hey everyone, in today's detailed in-depth review, I am proud to present this very nice surviving example of a 1994 Chevrolet Camaro Z28. Now this Camaro has been modified throughout the years. It does have an aftermarket hood and aftermarket spoiler, but overall the exterior and the interior remain relatively unchanged from its 1994 model year. Shown today in bright red, looks really good with the gloss black uh, trim accents it does feature the graphite cloth interior today's review is going to be a very in-depth review we're going to go over everything from the exterior to the interior we're going to go over mechanical performance fuel economy and everything in between four versions of the camaro were available in 1994 two coupes and two convertibles with either a v6 engine or a v8 our car being a z28 is a v8 power coupe with the optional 970 dollar t-top remo removable glass proof panels the car is rear-wheel drive with power coming from the 350 cubic inch 5.7 liter LT1 overhead valve pushrod V8 engine. This engine is of cast iron block and aluminum head construction with 16 pushrod actuated overhead valves and sequential multi-port fuel injection. Due to the unique reverse flow cooling system which cooled the cylinder heads first, this engine had a high 10.4 to 1 compression ratio. It created 275 horsepower at 5,000 RPM and 325 pound-feet of torque at 2,400 RPM. The Z28 can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.3 seconds, with 0, 0 to 100 miles per hour coming in at 14 seconds. The quarter mile time is trapped at 14 seconds at 100 miles per hour, and top speed is electronically limited to 155 miles per hour. All Camaros were equipped with a 15.5 U.S. gallon fuel capacity and consumed 5.6 gallons per 100 miles driven, with an estimated total driving range of 279 miles. EPA fuel economy figures are 15 miles per gallon in the city, 22 miles per gallon on the highway, and a combined average of 18 miles per gallon. Across the board, three transmissions were offered. V6 cars either had a 5-speed manual or a 4-speed automatic while the V8 cars either had a 6-speed Borg Warner T56 manual or a 4-speed automatic. Our car, sadly, comes equipped with the $750 optional electronically controlled 4-speed GM Turbo Hydromatic 4L60E automatic transmission with overdrive. I've always been a fan of the uh, F-Body GM cars, and it's really fun to find a nice surviving example of a first iteration of the redesign that came in 1993. Alrighty, around the rear of the Camaro, this vehicle has obviously been modified a bit. So it does have this very large rear wing in place of the standard uh, smaller profile wing. It also has these uh, pinstriping on it as well. The silver, you got the silver accent stripe here and you got the black straight line there. And of course this car does have T-tops. I love the uh, gloss black trim that divides the front and rear huge back greenhouse the pollen is bad today as you can see but anyway 
tons of uh, vision outwards. And then you come into this rear wing, obviously not stock from Chevrolet. Uh, it kind of looks out of place, but it's not too terribly bad. Pretty typical of the F-bodies, you have this large tail lamp here. But like, unlike the Firebird, the Camaro is all, um, it's divided up a little bit differently. So you have the reverse lights back here and then everything else here. The Firebird had more of a body width honeycomb. And of course you have your bumper, dual exhaust down below. You do have the uh, Camaro badging there. And of course the Z28 moniker. Alrighty, as we walk along the profile of the car, you'll see the car is actually a very low it's very low to the ground, it's very aerodynamic, and it is actually quite longer than it looks. However, that has been disguised by the proportions. Steering is hydraulically assisted rack and pinion with 2.3 turns lock to lock and a 40.1 foot turning radius. Wheels are 16 by 8 inch split 5 spoke cast aluminums, and they're shot in 245-50ZR16 Hankook Ventus B2 Concept 2 all-season tires, a $225 option. Brakes are vacuum-assisted four-wheel disc brakes assisted by ABS. Up front, we had 10.9-inch ventilator rotors and 11.4-inch ventilator rotors in the rear. These brakes can halt the Camaro from 70 miles per hour to zero in 185 feet. Taking a look up front, as we'll show in detail, it does look like it has a WS6 Trans Am hood. However, it is completely non-functional. It does have SS badges, uh, but this car is not an SS, it's just a Z28. Alrighty, up front, as you can see, it's a pretty typical Camaro from the 1990s. The brand new body style was just introduced for the 1994 model year in 1993. It is a far departure from the uh, Camaros of the 80s. I love these black mirrors, very aerodynamic that blend almost seamlessly into the front fender. Going along the heavily nostriled hood, which is fiberglass. It does have a WS6 Trans Am look to it. However, these are not real nostrils here, so it's a non-functional hood. And of course you have what would be turn signals you would think, but there's black paint. You got two headlamps here, low beam and high beam, of course, in the black center here. You would. Almost expect that to have a glass there, but it doesn't. And of course, we've also got our turn indicators and parking lights and our fog lamps down below. Very aerodynamic Camaro from 1994. Still looks good today, I think. Alrighty, and before we get inside, take a look at the key fob. First things first, we do have a typical GM two sets of keys. We got the door lock keys and the trunk release key and the round head and in the square key we have the pass key sensor and that's for the ignition and of course this car is also equipped with keyless remote entry from the factory you have your lock unlock and your trunk release it does have the chevy bow tie here and on the back it actually tells you how to work it it's from trw unlock for the driver's door press it at once if you press it twice it opens up all doors going to unlock the doors and they do work actually open the doors and you'll find a pretty nicely packaged interior it's actually very very sporty aggressive bucket seats very driver oriented dashboard nice long door panels you have this uh, tweed cloth on the top portion of it up here hard plastics and you got your power mirror controls here power locks power windows with auto one touch down for the driver door release your door lock here grab handle this all here is a nice molded vinyl and more hard plastic down here it is a carpeted area but it is a nice long matte pocket more carpet here and your speakers here on the driver's side instrument panel you have your instrument panel brightness and dim here headlamp controls your fog lamp switch here tilt wheel multifunction control all right and down here we do have our hood release and of course, looking into the footwell, you'll just see two pedals, which indicate it is an automatic. This vehicle is equipped with six-way power driver seat, manual seat back adjust here. And the seat belts actually come out of the ceiling and they go through these guide straps right through here. It does make for entry and exit to the rear of the vehicle much easier. 
Taking a look at the seats, a pretty aggressively bolstered two-tone graphite cloth seat. Just a sport bucket, high back bucket seat. No adjustable head restraints or lumbar supports or anything like that. But the cloth itself is pretty grippy and the seats themselves are pretty comfortable. Alrighty, now that we're inside, the power steering is actually pretty tight on this car, sitting still. It's a very tight steering, but you have a leather wrapped steering wheel. It's a two spoke steering wheel. It does have a driver's side airbag. Uh, you'll see their airbag and it has a Camaro logo right here in the airbag cover. And because it's from the 90s, um, they didn't have integral horn buttons in the airbag cover, so we had to put them on the sides here. And down here we have a multifunction switch that has completely rubbed off, but this section here would be the cruise control, so off, on, resume, accelerate, and on the side there's a button to set it. And then of course we have our wiper washer controls, turn signal controls, flash to pass and high beams. This one right here is your tilt wheel. Ignition cylinder is over there on the right. And facing us is interesting. I just now noticed this, so we're going to kind of go over it. Um, it's a full gauge cluster bright fluorescent orange needles and we have a battery voltage gauge here our oil pressure gauge have 7,000 rpm tack there 115 mile per hour speedometer if this was an actual z28 this would have 155 mile per hour speedometer uh, so that's kind of interesting i completely thought this was an ss or z28 and it does have the v8 and everything so i'm looking at this gauge cluster and i'm kind of thinking i don't know anyway fuel gauge temperature gauge over here vehicle currently has 92,192 miles on it and then here's your trip computer or trip odometer there all right moving over the top of the dash one thing i do like is you have these upper vents in conjunction with your lower vents here i'm sure that over time the dash pad is cracked so there is a nice aftermarket carpeting up here but it actually fits very well into the dash and um it looks okay You'll notice the large passenger airbag cover over there. Nice big glove box here. Does have nice amount of storage. You've also got a power trunk release button there. And moving down the center stack here, we have another auxiliary upper air vent. We have our climate controls, very easy to use. We have fan speed control here, four different levels, temperature control here, and our panel control. So we have max AC and AC here by level. You got your uh, face or upper vents, feet, foot wells, your blend for the defrost and foot wells, and of course your defroster. And it's pretty hot outside today, so we're going to leave the AC on. Moving down, we have a really nice radio here. It's a uh, Delco Bose AM FM or CD player. Um, so just a standard AM FM radio. And of course, we have a single disc CD changer here. And of course, we have the different presets and all that kind of stuff. And down below we have a cigar lighter or it could be used as a 12 volt power point nice large amount of storage here behind the shifter ashtray here automatic transmission control handbrake here both are leather wrapped on the knobs and then we have a cup holder here nice padded armrest which opens up to reveal some storage and it does illuminate it at night So overall, by today's standards, the interior of the Camaro would be pretty basic, um, basic transportation. However, back in the 90s, it was pretty nicely equipped, I would say. Taking a look above, we have a manually dimming rear view mirror here, and you'll see two buttons here. Those buttons control individual reading lights underneath the mirror. Those actually work very well. And over the top, we have driver and passenger sun visors, of course non-illuminated vanity mirrors no clips here they just fold they do have an elastic band but they do not slide they swing out but they do not slide so that is the amount of coverage that you get with your sun visor this here is the release handle for the t-tops and that is the lock for the t-tops and those store in the trunk all right if you want to get into the rear seat down here is a little release lever here you just lift up on that it unlocks the seat back and it reveals an interesting rear seating configuration. Two individual bucket seats, as you can see here, with the central transmission tunnel and the drive shaft tunnel, but one large seat back. It only seats two people back here. As you can see, there's only two seat belts. 
and back here there are no cup holders or anything like that although they probably could have made them pop out of this or they could have put some here or anything like that but they didn't and these seats sit pretty much level with the front seat so they're not very comfortable there is a release lever here on both sides if you want to lower the seats you can i've already got them unlatched but as you can see nice single folding seat does uh, greatly enhance the cargo carrying capacity of this car the trick of it is though if you want to unlatch the seat you have to unlatch both sides at the same time there is no lever that does both and of course it's a direct pass through to the rear there are three ways you can open the trunk first way is by opening the glove box as we've shown before and pressing that yellow button right there that will release the lift or the rear trunk area you can also use the round key head stick it right here and turn to the right that'll unlatch the trunk or of course you could just take the key fob and press and hold the trunk release button it'll unlatch but it will not lift it obviously you have to lift it yourself it is a quite heavy piece because of the glass. It is held up in place by two large hydraulic struts. You got a lot of graphite trim. That's your catch right there, so watch your head when you're loading. As you can see, much like the Corvette, that is how this uh, luggage area is actually configured. It's a lot like the Corvette from the same era. So you, nice, you have a nice carpeted flat parcel shelf right here. And of course, with the rear seats folded, uh, you get a little bit more, but it does not load flat. Uh, you got your Delco Bose uh, speaker back here, probably a subwoofer. And then you have this portion here, and this actually folds forward. And you have a much deeper well. Now, these little tracks here are actually for your driver and passenger side um, T-top storage when, they're, when you've taken them out. However, when they're locked in place, you can see you have a really deep storage well down here. You have some more compartmentalized storage over here. And when you have this covered, it makes for a nice privacy cover. So just a very nice overall trunk area. Alrighty, and that does conclude our in-depth walk around look at the 1994 Chevrolet Camaro. We hope you found the review informative and if you did, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews or Instagram at brinsoj1. You can also check it out, check us out on TikTok at Neighborhood Car Reviews. And of course, as always, thank you for watching.